I wanna buy a short sale. I wanna buy a foreclosure. Do you know the difference? Stick around to find out. Hi, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Samantha Perlman and I'm a realtor located in central New Jersey. Every week I post videos about what it's like to live and work here and guidance on buying, selling, and investing in the area. If this is something that interests you, you really wanna consider hitting that subscribe button below and the bell so you don't miss the new videos I release every week. You know, I get asked by a lot of buyers when we start the process, what exactly is the difference between a short sale and a foreclosure? They started searching online, they start to see some of these terms, these real estate terms, but they don't really understand what they mean. I think it's important to understand as you search for a home and you come across properties that might be a foreclosure or a short sale, that you understand exactly what they are, what the differences are, and what it would mean to you and your buying process. So let's start by talking about a short sale. What is a short sale? A short sale is when the property or the home is still owned by the homeowner. They have some sort of a hardship in their lives or a life-changing event. Uh, maybe they've lost their job, maybe they've lost their spouse, and it's really come to a point where they are having difficulty keeping up with the mortgage payments. They've concluded that the best decision for them is to actually sell the home. The challenge in this is that they actually owe more on the mortgage and the liens on the property than what the home is actually worth. Let me give you an example. Let's say somebody has a home that they need to sell because they've lost their job and they can no longer make the mortgage payment. They owe roughly $350,000 on the home and the fair market value for the property is only $300,000, leaving a $50,000 deficit in what is owed versus what they could actually sell it for. In this situation where they owe more than the home is actually worth, they have to request permission from the bank to accept a lower payoff than what is owed on the property. So they have to ask the bank basically, will they take $300,000 instead of the 350 that they owe. Now I'll go into the short sale process in a lot more detail in a future video, but for now, that's an overall summary of what a short sale is. So if you're purchasing a short sale, the only way that the sale goes through is if the bank is willing to take that $300,000. Now let's talk about a foreclosure. What is a foreclosure? A foreclosure is actually a legal process where the bank goes through the court system to take back ownership of the home. The homeowner either abandoned the property, stopped paying the mortgage on the property, or has voluntarily deeded the property back to the bank. So there are two main differences in these types of properties. The first main difference is in a short sale, the homeowner actually still owns the home. And in a lot of cases, they still live in the home as well. And in a foreclosure, the bank owns the home. Most of these properties are gonna be vacant because the bank is holding the ownership. The second main difference is really a big one. It is in how long the process actually takes from contract to close. In a short sale, do not let the name be deceiving because it is anything but a short process. A short sale can take anywhere from three months up until I've even seen as long as two years. The reason a short sale takes so long is because you're actually in an active negotiation with the bank. Again, you're asking them, will they take, let's say 300,000 instead of the 350,000. Also, the people that are handling the files have a lot of files on their desk. It takes a lot of time to go through them and review all the different aspects in order for them to make the decision on the negotiation. In a foreclosure, the closing process is actually a pretty standard amount of time and it actually can go a little bit faster depending on your financing. This is because the bank has already taken ownership of it. They've already reviewed all the financials behind it and they know exactly what they need to sell it for to cover all of their losses. So when you submit an offer to the bank, they're able to give you an answer back really quickly. Now there is one aspect of a short sale and a foreclosure that is very similar. In most cases, these properties are gonna be sold to the buyer in an as is state. Now technically any resale property in the state of New Jersey is sold as is subject to the buyer's right to do a home inspection. And the same is true in a short sale and a foreclosure. However, the bank and the homeowner has advertised upfront that they will not be making any repairs to the property. In the short sale situation, if you look at it like this, the homeowner is gonna advertise that they're not gonna be able to make any repairs because they don't have the budget to make the repairs. If they did, they would probably be holding on to the property. So there's no funds there for them in order to make repairs. So you as the buyer need to agree to take the property as is. When it comes to a foreclosure, you're dealing most cases with a big national bank and they're really not in the business of real estate. They're in the business of banking and they're just trying to get rid of the property so that they can cover their losses. So they are less likely to be willing to make repairs on the property for you as the buyer. Now I will say that this is not 100% for each side because I have seen both in a short sale situation and in a foreclosure situation where I've represented buyers, we were successful in negotiating a credit for repairs or a repair itself. However, the overall majority of buyers have to agree 
agree to take these properties as is. I'm gonna leave you with one tip for purchasing short sales, and I'm gonna bust one myth when it comes to foreclosures. Here's a tip out there for all you buyers if one of the properties you're interested in happens to be a short sale. When I'm working with a buyer and they're considering whether or not they wanna see or make an offer on a short sale, I ask them a very important question. I ask them, are you willing to wait at least one year before you can close on this house? Do you love it so much that you could wait a whole year before closing and moving in? If they answer yes, then we move forward with the short sale offer. If their answer is no, then I advise them a short sale may not be in their best interest. As I said earlier, the process is anything but short. I have seen it in its um, quickly as three to four months, but most cases you're looking at six months or more to get the negotiation done. The other challenge is once you start the process, you actually don't know how long it's going to take. You're kind of sitting in the dark. So if you're gonna purchase a, a short sale home, you have to really, really love the home. You have to feel like you're really getting the best possible deal and you have to practice a lot of patience. Now I'm gonna bust a myth about foreclosures. A lot of people out there think that only investors can purchase a foreclosure. Well, I'm here to tell you that you as a regular buyer can actually purchase a foreclosure as well and why it might actually be a good idea for you. So depending on the condition of the property, as I mentioned earlier, you most likely have to take it as is. However, there are quite a few banks that are making repairs and updates to the property before they go out on the market. So I've actually seen foreclosure properties that have been repaired and fixed up by the um, bank out in the open market where a buyer could purchase it and actually the condition is so good that they're able to obtain an FHA loan on it. If the property is in not such great condition and an FHA loan is not something that's feasible, then you might wanna consider getting conventional financing on it or renovation financing. And of course, regardless of the condition, you could always purchase any of these homes with cash. As always, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you found this information helpful. You know, my goal is to make the content you're looking for. So if you have an idea for a future video, leave it in the comment section below. And if you know anybody that can benefit from the information I've shared here today, please share the video with them. If you haven't already done so, consider hitting that subscribe button and the bell so you don't miss the new videos I release every week. I'll see you next week.